Welcome, thanks for joining and I look forward to your participation. My name is Vicki Marone and I am the Outreach Specialist of Organic Production with the Center for Regional Food Systems at Michigan State. My work focuses on organic vegetable and field crop production and soil health. Today I'll be sharing with you about organic certification and organic practices used to grow vegetables in Michigan. I help farmers throughout Michigan to try and test practices that will improve their soil health and identify best practices to produce good organic vegetables. I also work in Africa, mainly Malawi and Niger, helping farmers to grow legume seeds and manage challenging soils. What I'll share with you today are aspects of organic production to grow organic food and discuss how farmers can become USDA certified. Note the table on the left shares with you key points that a farmer needs to include. Or get, that's observations and prevention on their fields they observe through scouting and work through a farm plan and through far, smart practices for prevention of insects and diseases. If they do have a problem with uh, insect or disease and they want to apply a pesticide, that a pesticide must be OMRI approved. That's O-M-R-I, as you see in the upper right hand corner of the slide. Organic Material Review Institute, they review products, inputs for organic farms. They determine if they uh, follow the NOP specifications and if so they then can put that label on and it is a guide to the farmer to know what's allowed. Nutrients typical in organic are manure, compost, legumes, blood meal. They can be added and uh, used to improve the soil a nutrient level and no other no product that is not naturally derived can be used. For example, for nitrogen source, urea cannot be used, obviously. Um, for seeds, they must be non-GMO, non-treated with an insecticide, and they, are, they prefer them to be raised organically following the NOP standards. As with any third-party agency or certification, maintenance of records is important, and it also guides the farmer in determining what works. Uh, following a farm plan with crop rotations and all this will lead to success and hopefully a higher price to the farmer. Common markets a farmer uses include grocery stores and farmers markets which are open air once a week in every town, local farm stands on the farm, community supported ag which is a subscription for a consumer to pay and receive a bag of groceries a week during the growing season, community food co-ops or smaller or typically organic grocery stores. All these are opportunities for a farmer to engage in, but they must have the enough adequate produce and be able to fulfill the expectations of the market. Marketing can be difficult, and there are many organizations out there helping farmers to address this challenge, giving them guidance and support and marketing for their local, their non-GMO, their organic food. But the bottom line is they must gain a profit as with any good business. Markets depend on uh, three main points. The availability of quality produce produced by the farmer, a market that is willing and able to pay that price premium for the organic produce, and then farmers access to that market, both in terms of uh, getting there, providing, and providing the product that is expected by that market. As with all farming, it, there are steps to grow food from soil to table, but in organic there are a few things that are unique or more specific to organic. Um, it requires a bit more attention to the whole system since the farming relies heavily on slower release nutrients such as manure, and pest management is not an instant reaction uh, like a systemic pesticide might be in conventional, but requires multiple mechanisms to achieve a level of pest management that will lend to a quality crop. So let's discuss these differences a bit. Quick germination of organic seed is important. It provides competition to the weeds, it gives them a chance to grow faster than the weeds. That's critical. Remember, there are no effective herbicides in organic. If manure was used, there's a good chance that new weed seed was introduced at that time. So every step possible is needed to help the crop to be competitive with weeds. 
Proper soil preparation is essential. Farmers often use a stale bed approach, which means that the, they first till the soil to break up clods and prepare the seed bed about a week before planting. And then a day before, they'll go through with a very shallow disc or a cultivator and on the surface of the soil just to kill any newly germinated weeds. Tillage is a double-edged sword, offering a way for organic farmers to manage the weeds, but on the other hand, it disturbs the soil, inciting new weeds to germinate and releasing carbon, never mind the potential of a hard pan in that soil. Once the beds are prepared, the farmer can either transplant or direct seed, and transplanting, you see, can be by hand or mechanized if the farmer has that equipment. And here there's a nutrient solution to help the plants get a head start. Uh, direct seed is common for small seeded crops like carrots and lettuce. And you notice that very fine seed bed that they produced. Extension educators, we can play an important role to help farmers design a sound management system to incorporate all these aspects important to organic farming. I remind you that covering beds with plastic was discussed by Ron Goldie earlier, but I wanted to point out that it's especially useful in organic systems as there's no effective ways to manage weeds through herbicides, right, in organic. Fewer weeds means a better crop. Drip irrigation allows the farmer to control the amount of water to the plant and uses water efficiently. This approach reduces incidence of disease due to less water splashing and reduces weeds because it's getting the water right to the crop. Um, for us teaching farmers how to effectively use drip irrigation is a valuable opportunity for us to help them improve the soil health, the crop health, and reduce water consumption for a given crop. So there are several things a farmer can do beyond pesticides to manage pests. And here we see in the upper left corner a fan for air circulation. Keep that foliage dry, you have less foliar diseases. The high tunnel keeps the rain out, which if you've ever grown tomatoes, shoulder check is horrible during rainy season and you end up with cracked tomatoes, which are very hard to store and to transport to market. Floating row covers keep out the insects. Roll down sides on a hoop house or high tunnel reduces wind and can manage the temperature a bit if there's a chance of frost. Staking and trellising tomatoes or any uh, vine crop can reduce the fruit loss, by keeping it off the ground, keeping it dry, and keeping it free from soil contact. Mulching helps with uh, water conservation and reducing weeds. All these are smart tools to reduce pesticide and provide other benefits as well. Season extension is used by many farmers in Michigan, yet mistakes have been made um, despite the fact that we've been doing this for probably over 35 years. Uh, for example, farmers will put on compost for the purpose of nitrogen, but they forget to realize there's not going to be any rain, so they end up with the phosphorus problem. But we have a season now in Michigan where we're in the northern part of the U.S. We have our first uh, frost is typically October 14th. We can grow things through December, end of December in these high tunnels. And the only reason we can't grow after that is because of the lack of light. As the winter comes upon us, we lose our light. In the tropics, these could be used with screen meshes to keep insects and out of the crop. Harvesting for markets is uh, a fine business. The markets have high expectations of quality, of size, of bundles, of cleanliness, and it's up to the farmer to meet those expectations. So that's another point where we can assist farmers with in managing whether it's wash stations or pack houses or efficiency in labor. A good farm plan requires a well-designed layout of what is needed and what are the past problems of the field. The purpose of this document is to guide the farmer with appropriate crop rotations while increasing the soil's health and decrease the tendency for pest outbreaks. Don't want everything. I guess we do. This plan also indicates to the certifying agency that the farmer is following organic regulations. 
A good farm plan requires extensive systems knowledge and experiences on the farmer's part. Thus, the need for extension, folks like us, is strong, and the need for partnerships with other educators is even stronger. Partnerships make a tremendous difference in the quality and comprehensiveness of education we can deliver to farmers. Thus, we need to keep working on our relationships and on our communication with other agencies so that we can provide the best information available to our farmers. Thank you for your attention, and I hope to hear from you and look forward to meeting you, maybe even in person one day.